What's this spilling the tea video? You need your tea. Kiana said, I'm choose Gossip Girl. <laughs> Come on, imagine. No, not imagine. <laughs> we don't need another one of those in this town. Hi, everyone. Hey, guys. I'm Kiki. I'm Tom. And we're going to be spilling the tea about St. Andrews today. With actual tea. It's too hot to drink, actually. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is going to look good for the aesthetic. No, it really won't. It's <laughs> boiling. So we're going to talk about living in halls. I lived in halls last year and Tom is still living in halls <laughs> for his second year. So lots of fun, fresh, new things. So what was your hall experience been like? Because you're still in halls. True. I really like halls. I really liked it in first year. Second year admittedly I'm not really there because life takes control of you in St Andrews and he lives in the library yeah true they deserve like, yeah true first year I would say was I don't know can you start so I can think of what to say I thought it was really easy to make friends when you first got there just because everyone's also ready to make friends mm. I made friends that I'm still friends with now literally on the first day of freshers met them at dinner when we went to the hall communal dinner that's something I was gonna say I think communal dinners in halls are so good for They're first very year social. they don't regret anything but I hated catered food hated catered food <laughs> you and along with like a thousand of a student <laughs> there's too much oil in it it's awful I just I gained a lot of weight. It, it wasn't great. Freshman 15 is a thing. A lot of people gained a lot of weight. Um, I stayed fine. Yeah, because you're a stick and you <laughs> don't change. I'm not a fan of the food, so I would have preferred to be self catered, but I think halls kind of saved my life in a sense with the catered food because sometimes you just don't feel like cooking. No, I agree. I never feel like cooking. And the kitchens were awful in ABH, like awful, <laughs> like so bad. I think mean, the best thing is because obviously in St Andrews you get a choice between catered and non catered. I think honestly the best thing about catered accommodation in first year is just the fact that you get to meet so many people as a fresher in that way Especially if you're in a smaller hall. I don't know how many people were at ABA. Uh, over 500. Okay, so that's not really a small hall So I was in a hall that had like 200 people and literally by like the end of the first month You pretty much knew everybody because you saw them three times a day for meals. That's so scary. So <laughs> it was good it was good. Easy. In ABH, like way into semester two, you'd look around and be like, I've never seen that girl before in my life. <laughs> Whereas like in our hall, in Sally's, you'd like literally look around at a meal and be like, there is nobody new here. Why is there nobody new to talk to? <laughs> it was a really good experience in the sense that it was so easy to meet people and talk to people in that way because it was such a community vibe. Literally, you sat with the same people for three times a day. What was the noise level like at ABH? We'll show you in the video that's coming out next week, but ABH has like two sections that go off. Wasn't it designed like by a prison architect? Yeah. It actually is like a prison. Like I only ever visited her like twice there. It messes with your mind, but like, this is what I'm gonna explain. There's a left side and a right side. I lived on the right and I was in the first corridor in. So a lot of people who were on the first floor, they had to walk past me. It was quite noisy. I would say, but the nights weren't that bad. How did you feel about your rooms, like Gano last year? So Ganaki is tiny. So Ganaki is like an annex to Sally's, which has 80 rooms in it, I'm literally next door. And we used to go and eat all our meals in Sally's, use all of their communal spaces. Gano was loud, not gonna lie. Like to be fair, like it it's was- because everyone knew each other. Yeah, everybody knew everybody. So everybody was always like going to people's rooms, like having parties and stuff. It was a loud environment also, I think just because it's the center of town. It was so funny as well. Cause um, whenever I was in Catherine's room, I could just like look out the window and see your window. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, there used to be lots of conversations because it was like based around a central courtyard, so everyone used to talk to each other through their windows. Convenient for literally everything. So loud sometimes, I think, on like a Friday night and stuff. To be fair, usually I was the person making the noise on the Friday night, but like that's a different thing. We digress. The worst thing about student accommodation in St. Andrews, it's called DRA. <laughs> I thought you were going to mention specific. <laughs> that is a specific. DRA. So David Russell Apartments, honestly, if you get that um, accommodation in your first year, I feel so bad for you. Unless you're like a science student. Even then, it's still like... I mean, yeah, it's still bad. It's a massive they trek. They have their own specific bus. That's how <laughs> yeah. bad it is. It's about, what is it, like two miles out? And I don't know how many people live there. How many people live there? Like a thousand? A lot. Over a thousand, 1,500. It is so far away. We're going to show you guys next week oh. how far it is. And I can't believe that we're going all that way. I've never been to DRA. <laughs>
I'd never been, I'd never been to DRA until May of last year, and that was the first time I've ever, ever gone in. Not gonna lie, nothing special. It's just not necessary. It really it? isn't. If you live in town and you have friends who live in DRA, they will always come to you because mm -hmm. you're not going to them. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's cool. If you want like a flat vibe, apparently it's quite good because it's like self-catered. You live with like five other people or something. So positive about Ganaki, central location. It was such a, I think mean, it was like the best location that you could get for freshers because you're close to everything. There's always something going on. And like literally you walk out your front door and you're literally in town. I really liked how easy it was to make friends and so easy in that sense because you have like 200 people living with you who are like I said, you see them every day. However, that also causes drama if you live with people who like drama. I like watching the drama. Ooh, we're not gonna talk about no, we're not specifics. We're not gonna mention people. I think basically from a personal statement, they can just tell if you're dramatic and if you are, you get put in Sally's organic key because everybody there had something going on in their life that, that was unnecessary. That is not how they choose. That is, disclaimer, that is not how they choose like who goes where. I mean, if you listen to like the rumors about regs, then. What, because everyone has chlamydia? No, I'm not saying that. We cannot put this part in the video. I overheard a conversation. I'm also not going to say which hawks. Oh, I love overheard in St. Andrews. So, um... I've been on it so many times. This guy had just come in from a cab. Yeah, he'd gotten a cab back from town. He was talking to the receptionist. And then, so they were just having normal chat. And he said, you'll never guess what I just heard to the receptionist. And the receptionist said, what? And um, the guy said that apparently his cab driver had just gotten back from Blackpool in like a whole day had like left at 5 a.m. and this was around afternoony time okay so he'd gone to blackpool and come back and apparently he was taking this boy to some rehab center no one knows about this like literally no one knows about this and apparently the uni paid for it and everything oh my god and it cost like something like over 600 pounds <laughs> that's ridiculous he must be someone like affluential or important if his like parents like don't want it's just something i've overheard but <laughs> positives and negatives Come on, about Gano. Oh, negative. Looks disgusting. You'll see it next week. I mean, it doesn't look that bad. It looks hideous from the outside. The rooms are nice. The rooms are lovely, yeah. They're a bit small, but... Yeah, true. I honestly can't think of that many negatives. I really liked Ganaki. It's a brilliant location. You're next to the beach. You can see the sea. Apart from the fact that, one, it's a bit small, and two, shared showers and bathrooms. I don't think that was a problem. Well, that's because you're okay with it. I am very, very specific on having my own bathroom and shower. Okay, fine. So so I would say maybe I was just used to it because of like school and stuff. I don't think anyone had a problem with it. Everyone there was fine with it, generally speaking. Yeah, that's because they put that on their application for. Like, no, a lot of people didn't. Really? Were there. A lot of people who actually ended up in Ganaki didn't put down that type of accommodation. Like en suite? A lot of people like wanted to be like over at DRA side. Oh, I would have been livid if I had to share. Honestly, I know people who have like ended up being assigned DRA and have complained so much to the university that eventually the university has just moved them. That's another little hint for you about how to get out of DRA. Yeah, also Paul's are pretty strict about switching from catered to self-catered. Can you do that? I mean, sometimes, but there you can't do it on your own basically. You've got to get your parents to step in. You're not paying like £9,000 for accommodation. Oh, this is true. Accommodation in St Andrews is so expensive. It's so expensive. For catered standard, which is like a shared bathroom and stuff, which is like what Ganaki and Sally's is, it's £6,800. I had to pay like, what did I pay? £8,800? Did you actually? I think the most expensive is DRA. The most expensive I think is DRA, or maybe ABH actually, where it's, or no, when it's catered en suite. Mm -hmm. Either way, accommodation in St Andrews, compared to like what my friends pay at other universities, is so expensive. To be fair, not compared to London, mind you. London will always True. be the most expensive place. True. ABH positives, there's a lot of people. You have a community sense. Okay. Because, so we have these red couches in the foyer, and we used to sit on them and chat for loads after meals and it was just really homey and nice that's kind of what i miss in a way is like you don't get that vibe anymore so like the older you get and like whether you live in halls or not or whatever you don't get the same vibe as you do in freshers in terms of living in halls yeah. because like meal times got like dragged out so much longer because you were like just getting to know people mm -hmm. yeah anyway sorry it would be like a proper like hour long you'd be at meals oh, just... it was like two hours for me i used to go to breakfast for an hour every morning i'd be at breakfast for an hour breakfast. to talk to people <laughs> Oh yeah, so the red couches, and then we also had games room, mm -hmm. where there's a massive telly and people sometimes watch things in there, and there was also-
also a pool table. So yeah, it was really nice in there. Comfy sofas in there as well. I liked living on the first floor because I don't like walking upstairs and it makes like- She still doesn't. And it makes leaving so much more difficult. I was always late. Listen, I spent over 200 quid on cabs in first year. All my classes were in town. There was no point except for second semester, which kind of drove me crazy. Because I had a lecture in town, then I had a lecture in the physics building, and then... Which is next to ABH. Which is close, very close. And then right after that, I had another lecture in town. <laughs> so it was like this back and forth, back and forth, and I'd always be out of breath, always be late. That is like another positive about living in town and a negative about being further out, is you have to add on journey times to yeah. everything. So you have to add on an extra 20 minutes to your day. It doesn't take that long to get into town. I'd say like 13 minutes to walk yeah, from yeah, yeah. ABH into town, but to get from town to like where your lectures are, it's another five minutes. And then if you see somebody. And then oh. last year as well, there was a lot of roadworks going on because there was a fire. Mm, let's talk about the fire. I was coming back from horse riding. <laughs> That's the most. <laughs> Ever. I see a whole bunch of my friends like outside of halls just watching something and I was like what is going on and I see there's smoke coming out of what building was it? It was like the research biology chemistry building. Yeah it was the biochem building. Yeah so it's like a research building with like um, master's PhD students all their work was in there researchers like lecturers all their work was in there absolutely destroyed i think the fire was an accident yeah it was it was an accident they haven't finished rebuilding yet but they said that it wouldn't be habitual is that what you say habitable 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 it yeah okay so habitual <laughs> is like having a habit <laughs> okay so habitable 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 <laughs> So they said it wouldn't be habitable for... <laughs> Do you even, like, <laughs> English. learn English? <laughs> they said it wouldn't be habitable for 10 months, at least 10 months. So now that that building is out of action, they're basically learning in, like, port cabin things. Wait, no way. <laughs> they're like tin can cabins outside. That was a big drama. There was lots of fire on everyone's stories. But no one got hurt. Luckily. That's the good thing. And because it's a biochem building, they have like different um, cylindrical protections. So none of the hallways that the firefighters were going like up and down on were clogged with anything. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's cool. But it did spread. Like we watched it as it spread from room sure. to room. It was it was really interesting to watch, but so sad. Oh my gosh, this video is gonna be so long. No, but it's gonna be cut into bits because we keep getting distracted. Negatives. I didn't like living far away. It just wasn't for me. It's ugly, very ugly. I hated my kitchen. My kitchen, I honestly hated my kitchen. Also, there was bird poopy on my window. <laughs> for the better part of a year. Because <laughs> they don't clean it regularly. No, that is true actually. Mm -hmm. I, we got cleaners. Yeah, they got cleaners. Every week they'd have someone in to like take their rubbish out. No, 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 every day someone would collect our rubbish. Every week or a couple of times a week, someone would come to clean our rooms. And every day our kitchens and shower rooms would get cleaned. This is what I mean when I say the Gano kids are spoiled. True, I mean they got that in Sally's too. Doesn't matter, all of you is living in town. <laughs> spoiled, spoiled. <laughs> it was so sweet. Our cleaners used to get us like little treats and stuff as well. We had room inspections and you had to clean all of that ish. We up never had room inspections. We got so many like little treats. Yeah, I because you had people cleaning for our, you. Our cleaners were so lovely. They for used, free. <laughs> they, used to, they used to do such kind things. Like if you, were if you left something on the floor and they were coming in to clean, they'd like pick it up, like fold up feel like I came in once and like some clothes that have been on the floor were like folded up on my chair and like at Easter at Christmas Bullshit, at Christmas right the girls side all got sweets from the cleaners and then at Easter the boys side all got Easter eggs and it's like you should be giving stuff to the cleaner but they're giving you stuff it was so sweet the lunch people were nice like the lunch ladies I was friends with one of the lunch ladies she's really nice her name was Sarah. Um, so if you're watching Sarah, <laughs> pick up the food. The uni hall for this year, it is out of it, but not as out of it as ABH. Extra five minutes on to get to ABH. Yeah. I'd say five to ten minutes. What I would say about uni hall is it's quiet, and I really like that compared to last year. It's so peaceful. Also, but you live in the London building. Yeah. I really like the old building, you know, like the old girls. It's so thing. cold. It's so pretty. They got massive windows. I really dislike the old like, part. And like really tall ceilings. Like I'm a it's sucker for Yeah, tennis. but it's the girl, the Wardlaw building, the girls' building. It looks like a Victorian mental asylum. No, it doesn't. It does. Have you been in? What? Which one? The one that I said with like massive windows. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've been in it. I walked in there last, just the girls' part. I mean, it's like green, like yeah. the wall. The thing is, the rooms are really nice. The rooms are lovely. However, I walked in there last year with some friends. We knew nobody in that building anyway, so it was really dodgy us being there. Yeah, and your boys as well. Yeah, but anyway, the boys can go in that building. I know, but like... And it was the most eerily quiet building. It was like a haunted house. Like, you just like see like the shadow of someone walking around and then not see them. No, I love it. They had like a massive room with a piano and like all these lovely sofas. It's a very aesthetic building. It's beautiful. Uni Hall is the oldest of the student accommodations. Isn't Sally's the oldest? No, Sally's is... Sally's, do you know Sally's was only built like 70 years ago? Really? It's so like fake. The quad and everything. Not the quad, but the actual Sally's building. Oh. The quad was only built like 200 years ago though. Really? It was completely redesigned. Are you sure? Yeah. But it surely existed for... It existed before that, but like well, what we see now is only okay. like 200 years old. A lot of this university was redesigned. What was he saying? Oh, positives, yeah. The food is so much better. Like the cooks are so much better. No offense to the Sally's cooks. They were lovely people and they were so friendly all the time. But the food in Uni Hall is so much nicer. There's so much more variety and it seems healthier. Like the salad bar is so much bigger. The fruit selection is bigger and the food is not as starchy yeah why do they serve potatoes with everything oh my gosh meal? don't literally last year i swear one time i went down it was pasta with a side of potatoes and another side of garlic bread they were the options and i was like this is ridiculous whole food is no i some of it's nice some of it you have to people in the back I am dairy intolerant. And oh, it must be a nightmare for you. They don't have any, they, first of all, you'll only get like one or two options that are okay for you to have. And then secondly, the dessert, you won't get any. You never get you dessert. You could have fruit. <laughs> anyway. Um, Say that one more time. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't actually have a single negative. Okay. Like the only negative I would have is that the cleaners come too early, but that sounds just really spoiled. You have cleaners in Uni Hall as well? <laughs> they are really lovely. They commented on my fashion sense the other day. What is this level of spoiledness? Oh my word. I am the epitome of the St. Andrew's die. <laughs> which I pay extortionately for. I feel like I need something stronger than tea to listen to you talk about this. <laughs> what, like there's alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what I do to get through these days. <laughs> I got my flat pretty late because I was under the impression that I'd be buying a house, but that didn't end up happening. That's also really like spoiled thing to say. Yeah. I was Let's like, be honest, out of like, whenever anybody watches our videos, it's always just us like looking spoiled or sounding spoiled. Oh yeah, anyways, that ended up not happening. So uh, it was mid to end of May when I got this place, which also pro tip to anyone who's now applying and everything for flats. Don't be disheartened if you don't get one. They always start like popping up over summer again. No, that's true. I was going to say that because flat hunting as a first year or as any year in this town is difficult. so difficult. There's not enough houses or flats. They are super expensive. Like you pay extortionate amount. Yeah. I mean, you have an amazing location. I know, but like, it's still not worth the amount of space. No, it's like it's this. really not. I should be paying three hundred less. Yeah, I agree. Now we get into the tea. No disrespect, but I hate Rollos. Isn't it Rollos? Is it Rollos? I say Rollos. Whatever they are, whoever they are, they have a death wish because <laughs> I'm gonna kill them. A bunch of kids in November. Don't know why, but apparently they were throwing golf balls. One of them smashed into my kitchen window. So Andrews, the home of golf. And I have the golf ball and everything. Like, <laughs> Did you keep it? It's in my kitchen. Like, like PTSD. What am I supposed to do with it? So I informed Rolos. They sent someone to board it up and they said, oh, you know, within the next three, four weeks, we'll have someone over to deal with that. It's near the end of January. Have they fixed my window? No. No, they haven't fixed my window. That's the answer to that. I didn't have a washing machine for over a month. Did you not? No. How did you do any laundry? I took one set to uh, the dry cleaners and then I, my neighbors were kind enough to let me do two loads like That's at their kind. place. My neighbors, honestly, lifesavers. I don't know if they still watch my videos, but... <laughs> <laughs> do they still watch us? Is anyone still watching us by this stage? Uh, I don't know, but either way, love you guys so much. Just some problems off the bat. I've been having a lot of issues with Scottish power and electricity because they are charging me an extreme 
proportionate amount of money for what I live in and how much electricity I'm actually using. This is like one of those political party broadcasts. I am so angry, Tom. You don't even understand, okay? I got here and when I arrived, like you rem you guys remember the first video, unless you haven't seen it, go look at our traveling to St. Andrews video. Um, nice plug. That was smooth. <laughs> in that video, I talked about how I was getting here and when I got here they weren't open, didn't have the keys, didn't inform me, all this stuff. But when I got in and everything and I got the welcome package and everything, they failed to inform me that I had to um, log in to Scottish Power and provide a meter reading from the beginning of my stay. I didn't even know that I had bills to pay until mid-October, which, you know, they should have told me. And then I like get a £75 bill and I was like, what? So for two months, I was charged like 75 pounds, which is a lot, you know, I was speaking to someone- You were charged like, how much? 75. Comment below if you want us to become a cat channel. <laughs> Can you finish your domestic yeah. story? Please? I'm sorry, okay? It's just, she's such a- <laughs> This is like such a middle-aged person <laughs> story. I'm having to deal with bills. Okay. <laughs> It's adulting. I hate it. So now I provided like some more frequent meter readings and they were like, yeah, so um, you've paid 150 pounds already. So we want you to also pay an extra 289 pounds. So they're charging me 289 pounds for the month of November. That's ridiculous. I told them I'm not paying it until you launch an investigation. I need someone to call me back. Mm. And they're such bullshit. They keep messaging me saying, oh, well, we can't have someone call you. And I'm like, well, get the message to the right person and have someone fucking call me because this is, I'm not paying it. I cannot be dealing with them cutting off my electricity. I would die. I would literally die because my kitchen is electricity and I would not be able to cook any food or shower. Or do anything. Or do anything. Like, how would you charge anything? <laughs> and um, also Skye's been ill three times since she's been here. I'm beginning, and like, you can hear that my nose is locked. I have allergies. This is not a cold. Um, I've had these allergies since November. This flat is bad juju and I need to leave it ASAP. So You should have done like an exorcism or something when you first got here. I should have honestly. <gasps> Let's hold a seance night. Let's actually just hold a seance night though. I really want to do that. Okay, I'm down. I don't know if it's Christian, but like let's do it. <laughs> I have sage. We can like burn sage and like cleanse. How'd you do a seance night? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll Google it. Yeah, and then let's invite people to the sound Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. My landlords, I'm grateful to them because they let me have Sky here, but they're also very annoying. Not gonna lie though, I think everybody's landlord in St. Andrews is and like every horror story I've heard has been about their landlords. To be fair, some people's landlords sound lovely, like they bring them nice stuff. Yeah. But then some people have absolutely horrible ones um, in which, so like Benny, for instance, they didn't hear back for ages about when they had to pay their rent. So they didn't know who they were paying their rent to or how they were paying their rent. Other people's landlords, they say that they're gonna do like all of the maintenance work in the house or outside the house. They do none of it. Like mm. you don't hear from them for ages. Like Beth didn't have heating for like three months. Yeah, true. Like you email people, like you email your landlords to be like, can you come and like cut the grass? or can you command cut the grass? That's such like a middle-aged thing as well. Can you, who has the luxury of a lawn in St. Andrews? This is my other question. And like maintenance work, like cookers or showers or anything like that, and people just don't hear back for ages. Yeah, you know I don't have hot water. My taps don't, it's only cold water. And do you know what I also think it is as well though? People, so landlords in St. Andrews get away with charging extortionate amounts and don't do anything as landlords really because they know they can get away with it mm -hmm. because property here is a premium. There's not enough capacity. Anyway, do you think we spilled the tea? Because I have no tea left, so I'm reckoning that the tea has I been- well, my tea has well and truly been spilt. Someone commented on one of our videos asking about like job opportunities. Tom has not applied for a job here. No, I haven't actually. I've applied for many, been rejected by all. It's very difficult to get a job here. I mean, it is possible. It just, it takes a long time, especially the job that I want to get. Wages are normal. I mean, to be fair, there are lots of places where you probably could look for jobs, like at the start of semesters. Also, if you check the uni website, um, there are lots of like uni jobs. To be fair, even though we don't have a lot of shops or cafes or whatever, or restaurants, they all generally employ students. Being like me, who's come from a country where I have no work experience because people under the age of 18 are not allowed to work and you need a sponsor as well. Mm. So you can't be like in school. So I never had any jobs. I only did like a small internship. People are not willing to let you work for them with that little work experience. Why I don't you just lie? I need, I can't lie. Maybe. I need to do some groveling though. Other tea about the uni? Oh, the Gatsby guy. Oh, so, so Andrews, if we're not a good enough representation, then here is another story of privilege in St. Andrews beyond belief. There is a, <laughs> there's a guy in St. Andrews called Gatsby. 
People call him Gatsby, or that's a Gatsby of St. Andrews. Basically, I've met this man. He is really nice. He's a lovely chap. How, what year is he in? Third or fourth. Okay. But I met him at a ball. Okay. Anyway, he's charming. I'm just saying that's why I get an invite. <laughs> uh, anyway, and his parties are quite like legendary, apparently, or quite big, even though I'd never heard of them before actually meeting him. But apparently, they're very selective as well. Like, to get an invite, you have to be very in there and like very. Like part of the elite of St Andrews and or like what is deemed the elite of St Andrews anyway. Which we're not. No, it's so sad. <laughs> but we have to be like loaded to be there. So. <laughs> yeah, true. I don't even think it's that though. It's not even like people who are loaded as well. It's just like this circle of people. But nine out of ten times there. Oh yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Mm. Anywho, this guy hosts like great parties, like quite big parties. He hosted a party in a house he has in the Badlands, so I probably wouldn't go to be honest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you say that half your life is lived in the Badlands. True. So he lives in the Badlands. Or he has this house in the Badlands anyway, and he hosted a great party with very selective invites and stuff And like it was really difficult to get into like people had to like jump over the fences and stuff to like actually just like party crash In the middle of his living room. He had two live llamas rented. He literally had two like adult sized live llamas in the middle of this living room whilst everyone around him was like partying and there was like music music drinking alcohol like normal party stuff like obviously animal cruelty you guys yeah i mean the rspca will have a field day with that <laughs> firstly my question is how do you get a llama into your house you know that reminds me of something that happened on one of our like uh senior prank days at school <laughs> i mean this is for a later video but i'll just tell you now because it's quite funny <laughs> Let us know if you'd like to hear about more things. Yeah, true. There is a lot more tea to spill about this yeah, university. There definitely is. So, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. We will see you next week. Next week's video is going to be... Accommodation. Yeah, we're going to tour all of the accommodations for you guys. Because so many people always ask, not just us, but anybody about St Andrew's accommodations, where to live in halls and stuff. So we're going to tour them all for you, show you the bedrooms, show you the common spaces. Gives you some insights into what it's like to live there. So we'll see you later, guys. Bye. See you soon. Oh my gosh, she's so flirtatious today. <laughs> Your cat is like on something right now. Yeah. <laughs>